Hey everybody, this is Claire, and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores, or I go to estate sales, or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist, and I'm always looking for things that I find interesting, or I think, things that I think that you would find interesting. And then I bring them home, try and find out as much as I can about them, and then tell you guys about them. So, here's what I've got today. <laughs> so I know this probably doesn't look like a whole hell of a lot, but this is something kind of cool. And I thought it was definitely worth kind of just picking up and talking about. Um, I have a dish. <laughs> and it's not very big, in fairness. I think it was, it's kind of like a serving dish or whatever. It'd probably be used for like vegetables or a bread basket or something like that. Um, I bought it for... Just checking. I had to actually go and check my notes there for a second. I bought this for $6 in the thrift store. And essentially I bought it because I liked how unusual it is and I thought that this brass edge was just was something really was something really interesting the finish on the inside is also very interesting you can see that this is all smooth but the base of it is textured and why I'm not entirely sure <laughs> now there is a few spots here that is these are not actually dirt or anything that I can clean off. That's actually like a mark or whatever. It's been blazed into the porcelain. There's nothing really you can do about it. This is as clean as it's going to get. The nice thing is that the base of it is completely clean. It has no chips or cracks, which is kind of surprising. And the only parts that aren't glazed are these four corners here. And of course, we have a mark. That's going to be important in a minute. We love marks on pottery. <laughs> and it tells us something about it. So... It is a little over, let's say nine and three quarter, nine and three quarter inches long, and say five and a half inches wide. And I'm going to measure at the highest point because that's generally the easiest. And it's just under three inches. Yeah, say so three inches high, and that's at the highest point. So you can see right there. <laughs> so. Okay, so so essentially, what have we got here? We have a very interesting porcelain serving serving dish, and the mark is pretty good for us. You can kind of tell us a little bit about it. Now, actually, one of the things you can see as well is you can see this crazing essentially everywhere on this. The only bad thing about this dish, in fact, is the, is the fact that this is just very, very heavily crazed. Obviously, it got a fair bit of use. Crazing is something that's caused by... Um, essentially by thermal expansion of the porcelain. If something gets like, it gets hot and then cold and hot and cold and hot and cold. And if it has extremes of temperatures over a long period of time, essentially the the, the glaze starts to crack. Can't really be helped. But there we go, if we get it to thing. And you can see that's kind of sort of looks like an ores, but I've already done the work. I know exactly what this is and I'll show you now. Let's just pop that over there. So what we have here is a dish made by this potter, Max Rosler. Um, there's a little bit of information about him here. Again, I'll put it down in the description if you're curious. He was German and he was working in Bonn and then moved to Bohemia. And finally, him and his family moved to Rodach near Coburg. And then essentially he started producing Rodak porcelain. So he wasn't actually working for a very long time, unfortunately. Um, we do have a fair bit of information on the marks, which is really useful for our purposes. It lets us date this quite nicely. Now, there's a bunch of different ones here. The ones that we are interested in are the impressed marks, the incised rose marks. Um, there's a couple of them, but they all kind of indicate the same thing. It's around 1894 this would have been in use. So essentially early 20th century is what we're looking at here. That, if I turn it around the right way, you can just about make out or V or here and the incised rows. This is obviously a model number of basically of some kind. Like it's not going to tell as much information about the piece itself unless we had a catalogue or something to reference and we kind of don't. So this guy basically for a very short time was making very fine porcelain um, in Europe and there's a little bit of information here. Uh, it was transformed into a public living company and then after World War One, he sold his shares to Dresner Bankhaus Brother Arnold, and he died in 1922. The company was taken over by Siemens, and then essentially that's the end of it. So he wasn't really, this is not one of these long-running kind of companies like 
Like say for example, Roy Winter is something that's been around for decades. Now this guy wasn't wasn't working very long. And the thing that's really interesting about this, or at least the thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, is this brass decoration that's been added onto it. Like you can see here, it's literally just kind of it's just basically this brass piece. And it's got some tarnish to it, but otherwise it's very, very nice. And part of the reason that I got this is because I was kind of interested in this as a, as a kind of a decoration. And I'll just show you a little bit more of it there. You can see that? That looks, I mean, it's it's nicely done. And it's literally just kind of, you can see that it was literally just popped in and then that piece was bent over and then that's it. It is actually loose. <laughs> I am not entirely sure of the point of it. I'm sure it must maybe maybe it would be there to kind of protect the edges of the dish perhaps like it's certainly kind of nice for effect and i expect that at some point this would have been entirely gilded and it probably would have looked incredibly nice i haven't been able to identify whether this is from a come on i haven't been able to identify whether this is from a particular like set or dinnerware i don't have that much information like what i do know is that this kind of brass kind of application onto onto porcelain is called ormolu. I don't have the link here, but I'll actually put it down in the description. It kind of tells you a little bit more about what it actually is. Like, and here's some pictures of essentially ormolu done by Max Rosler, because apparently this is part of his thing. You can see these nice porcelain pieces that would have had these brass kind of finishes just kind of, you know, kind of clipped onto them to make them look nice. There's another one that looks very similar. It looks like a bread basket. <laughs> this one, by the way, $50 US. <laughs> So bear in mind that from the mark, we can kind of guess that this is about 100 years old. That one is only selling for 50. What are the rest of this looking like? Like what's what's the, have, have we got something really good here? And you can look at that and go, wow, check that out. We've got like an antique basket, $282 for 300, and, you know. There's a lot of stuff there. Look at that, look at those prices. Max Rosler, wow. And yeah, I hate to, I hate to, I hate to be a killjoy, I'm afraid, but no, I'm afraid that this is just, just does not sell. People are not interested in it. The market's not there for it. Like it's pretty, I have to say, but I spent $6 on it. I don't think that I would like, I would, don't think I'd be able to sell it for any more than maybe, maybe 12 or $13. And maybe only if someone is kind of interested in antique porcelain of this type. I mean, the dish itself is kind of plain, apart from the Ormolu decoration. So, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be buying this again. I'm very glad that I got this one. And I'm glad I had a chance to kind of investigate and kind of learn a bit about like what Ormolu is and like, and essentially about the company as well, because having more knowledge about old antique porcelain is always a great thing. But no, this isn't going to be worth a whole lot in comparison to the, the even the pieces that sell, like you know, for not a whole lot. I have to say that one sells for thirty thirteen dollars Canadian. That sells for twelve dollars. There's just there's not a whole lot going on here. So yeah, <laughs> not every antique, unfortunately, is going to be worth money, and not everything rare is going to be worth money. It's always a case of it's got to be both rare and people have to want it. <laughs> And it looks like nobody really is into this, you know, this kind of antique porcelain. Anyway, I still think it's kind of cool. I'm going to put it up on Etsy and I'm pretty sure that somebody is going to kind of like it. Um, I will probably sell it for maybe $12 or $13 plus the, the shipping cost or something like that. Um, this is fairly light. I mean, I would say it's going to cost maybe $15 to $16 to ship it Canadian. Um, I'm just kind of eyeballing that probably maybe up to 20 i don't think it's actually it's mostly about the weight and i don't think that's that's quite heavy enough to go up to 20. so let's say let's say 16 16 17 dollars to ship it's not too bad maybe someone's gonna like it for that so i still think it's kind of fun i still think the brass is really very nice so this is my small joyful thing for the day thanks very much for watching guys